first day of your cruise is when you finally get on board and start that vacation. I've got some ways to make sure your first day on board is amazing. Up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RailCaribbeanBlog.com and I want to share some really helpful tips for making boarding day super easy on your family. There's a lot happening on Embarkation Day, so here's some quick and easy tips to ensure you start off on the right foot. The first thing you want to do is something you should be doing well before you ever get near the cruise terminal and that is do the online check-in. In fact, you should be doing the online check-in before your cruise via Royal Caribbean smartphone app. Doing the online check-in will not only save you time at the terminal, but it will help speed things up. You can do online check-in up to 90 days before you're sailing, but realistically you should plan on doing it at least a couple weeks beforehand so you don't miss out. What you're going to need is your passport your credit card, and of course being able to take a selfie photo. If you're able to take advantage of this, it will save so much time in the cruise terminal. The next thing you're also going to want to do is going to be related to that cruise check-in process, and that is to print your luggage tags. When you arrive at the cruise terminal, you're going to have the option of dropping off your luggage to be delivered on board the ship. Porter's there to take it. There is no charge to drop off your luggage. However, there is a customary tip that's associated with doing so, and yes, you should totally take advantage of this. Number one, you don't want to be those people who are lugging luggage around the ship. I see it all the time. It's not a great thing. Number two, even if you wanted to lug your luggage around, your luggage has to be small enough to fit in the x-ray machines in the cruise terminal, which means a lot of the larger luggage pieces wouldn't fit anyway. But most importantly, it's going to make your life easier. So print out your luggage tags, which will be available a little closer to your sailing, usually around 75 days or so. And at that point, you can print out your luggage tags and then attach them to your luggage to make sure that they get to the right destination. Something else you should know about the first day of your cruise is you're not allowed to bring just anything on board. There are a list of prohibited items that you cannot bring on a Royal Caribbean ship. These include some ones that are obvious and some that are not so obvious. So you cannot bring firearms, ammunition, sharp objects like knives or scissors, illegal drugs or substances, CBD oil or CBD products, candles, incense, coffee makers, clothes, irons, hoverboards, martial arts, self-defense, sports gear including handcuffs, pepper spray, and nightsticks, hookahs, flammable liquids and explosives, ham radios, baby monitors, electrical extension cords, dangerous chemicals including bleach and paint, perishable food and meat products, or alcoholic beverages excluding, of course, ones that you are allowed to bring on, like wine. It's important to review this entire list because I did not include every single thing on the prohibited item list, but if you pack any of these things, you're going to risk a delay in your luggage being brought on board the ship, and that's just going to screw up your first day on board. One of my favorite things to recommend to people to do is bring a carry-on bag to bring on board the first day of your cruise. These are things you want to carry that are going to be important to be using in those first couple hours on board the ship. Certainly sunglasses, perhaps a change of clothes into a bathing suit, any medicine you're going to need for the rest of that day, a book, electronics, chargers, basically the stuff you're going to need to keep with you until your luggage gets delivered a little later on. If you're wondering what time to arrive to your cruise port, I always recommend people arrive to the cruise terminal somewhere between 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. The reason being is this is a time in which you can beat the crowds that show up usually later in the day and it'll allow you to also take advantage of a more fuller day on the first day of your cruise. Now you may be wondering, well, wait, hang on a second. I did that online check-in tip that you talked about earlier and it says here my boarding time is later in the day. What about that? And my answer is those boarding times are suggestions. They're not enforced or required. So you may feel free to arrive much earlier to your cruise terminal. If you're wondering what the check-in process is like and what to expect when you get to the cruise terminal, here's a basic breakdown. Number one, you're going to park the car or, or be dropped off or you're going to drop off your rental car. Basically, you're doing something with your vehicle that involves you leaving it somewhere and you walking into the cruise terminal. However, before you get to that cruise terminal, you're going to give Porter's luggage, as we talked about earlier. And again, this luggage will be delivered to your stateroom later on. It is customary to tip them, as I mentioned, and usually people tip about $1 or $2 per bag. As you walk into the cruise terminal building, number one, you're going to have to show proof that you're actually going on a cruise which is in the form of your set sail pass. So make sure you have that printed out or available on your digital device. Then you're going to go through the security process where you're going to put any items you have through an x-ray scanner. This again is somewhat similar to going through an airport. And then after through security screening, you're going to check in with the representative who's going to go over your cruise documents, maybe take some photos if necessary, and essentially get you ready to board. After that point, you're going to either be able to walk straight on board the ship because the ship is ready to board, or if it's not ready yet, you're going to be assigned to a seating area. Seating areas in the cruise terminal are based on your status in Crown and Anchor Society, which is Royal Caribbean's customer loyalty program. So if you're in gold, you'll see with the gold, diamond, diamond, etc. And Royal Caribbean will start the boarding process based in reverse 
Crown and Anchor Society level, starting with Sweets and Pinnacle guests, Diamond Plus, Diamond, guests who have purchased the key, Emerald, Gold, and then everybody else. It's a pretty quick process. So you shouldn't worry too much about how long this will take, even if you get there earlier in the morning. But again, once they get going, it moves very quickly, and you should expect to be on board pretty quickly. Once you walk through the gangway and onto the ship, they'll scan your set sail pass or your sea pass card, depending on the ship you're on, and then you're on board the ship. And when you get on board the ship, you have the option of really exploring all around. Keeping in mind, by the way, staterooms usually do not open until 1 or 1.30 p.m. So if you're getting on board before then, that just means you get to enjoy the ship before your room is ready. You can go up to the pool and go swimming. You can go to one of the complimentary dining venues or even one of the specialty restaurants and enjoy lunch. This is one of the best opportunities to explore the ship, get your bearings and understand where everything is kind of laid out. And if nothing else, maybe start on that drink package you purchased, enjoy some time by the pool and otherwise start relaxing and enjoy that vacation. So there's a look at some cruise boarding tips that you need to know. I hope this helped you out. And if you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to turn on notifications so that way you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.